Hi, I'm Heather. Hi, I'm Alexis. And we want to talk about sacred economics, divine compensation, budgeting. Um, thinking about money in a new yeah, way. Yeah, thinking about money in a, in a new way. And um, not just cash, but also the resources needed in order to feel like you're living a really abundant life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't yeah. have to trade cash for Right, right. So, Resources are yeah. multifaceted, different yeah. different ways. People, mm -hmm. human resources, mm -hmm. our internal resources. Mm -hmm. Why don't you just kind of share, what, you know, what are you most interested in talking about or what is, you know, give me some direction where to start. I think the thing that is like biggest on my heart and in my space right now is like shifting my relationship with money and mm -hmm. what does that mean? That's a huge mm -hmm. concept. So many people are talking about that right now. Mm -hmm. So for me specifically, it's like I need and want and get to relate to money in a new way mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, where I, I grew up with concepts. I grew up with interpretations. I grew up with uh, it, money doesn't grow on trees and mm -hmm. you know, root of all like the root of all, what is it? Mm -hmm. evil, root of all evil is money. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And and those type of things. And I've done a lot of like um, soul sweeping. I would call it. You know, mm -hmm. brushing out a lot of this kind of like subconscious reprocessing and mm -hmm. reprogramming work mm -hmm. on learning all of this. Um, and at the same time, I feel like I still have this sticky point for me. And I remember this situation in my childhood or adolescence or somewhere where I was with a group of peers and I said to everybody, the root of all evil is not money it's hoarding wealth mm. yeah mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. i find myself like having really hard time mm -hmm. saving any money mm. and like i'll get money and then it's all gone mm -hmm. and i'm just like mm -hmm. ah it feels like a, a like a a leaky vessel mm -hmm. <laughs> which is so frustrating because i mm -hmm. know it and i see it and i have the awareness and yet for some reason or another right it's like that, that got tied real core to my identity. Mm. So I remember all my peers in the whole circle that we were in were being like, yes, 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 you're right. And so I remember in that moment, I was like 11 or 12 or 15 mm. or whatever, how mm -hmm. old I was, somewhere in that very mm -hmm. like malleable by social mm -hmm. peer group constructs thinking, oh, got it. Okay. And so I can make money, but I can't have it. Yeah, which is because hoarding really, my first thought when you said that was, huge amounts of money that's what I think and I thought yeah, yeah but then I can imagine I can understand why your your younger self might yeah. be like oh that means don't hold on to none anything yes exactly I mean, which is not it's not working out for no me in my and life. no no which is why I was <laughs> like when you said something I was like oh we gotta talk about this yeah, yeah. because I was like man this thing is really not working this mm -hmm. concept that I installed when I was mm -hmm. 12 years mm -hmm. old or however mm -hmm. I was so I guess that's kind of where the foundation of the base that you know, had me come to you and say, mm -hmm. hey, I want to have a conversation about this. Like you said, there's so many different directions I could go. Mm -hmm. And I've been nerding out about, um, about, uh, I don't know, I guess I could say capitalism and economics, um, and like, uh, subsistence lifestyle and, um, <laughs> basically my entire life. And yeah. I did, I came very close to a bachelor's degree in economics mm -hmm. and then, um, growing up very much in an entrepreneurial environment plus right. practicing it yeah. for decades. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, that reprogramming of those childhood beliefs, um, are so huge for everyone. Yeah. Um, particularly because I feel like those of us who are in our adult years right now, um, really learned as younger folks that money and cash were like the only way to happiness, the only way to get the things you need or want. That. Um, and the, and also that there was much more trust and like, belief that it was real. <laughs> mm. um, uh, and I think it's how most folks grew up, but I grew up where literally like cash was the last thing that we used to actually um, uh, basically have an energy exchange. Like if uh, cash was even to doctors, like we paid doctors with halibut. You know, I mean, they would give us a bill that was a cash <laughs> amount, but we would give them that value in halibut and everybody's happy. We are, we're all benefiting. So well, yeah, because, yes, yeah, food is, well, this calls into question also a larger concept of what are resources. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot about internal resources. Mm -hmm. Like, are you resourced and skilled in the situation? This is, I guess, the 
the currency I mm-hmm. most frequently deal mm-hmm. in. Mm-hmm. This is amazing that you brought up the halibut paying the mm-hmm. doctors because mm-hmm. the currency I most frequently deal in is actually internal resources. Mm-hmm. How internally equipped are you mm-hmm. to face the situations of your daily mm-hmm. life mm-hmm. of also, you know, extreme circumstances, something mm-hmm. that is completely outside of the realm of your daily life? Mm-hmm. How prepared are you to face the unknown that's a huge one. Mm-hmm. How prepared are you to get out of your comfort zone? Like, you know, how do you feel approaching different kinds of people? How do you feel handling things? Do you shy away? Do you tend to like fight or flight? There's too, too much of this connection between cash equals these things. What are those things? These are, are like much? your life. Needs and yeah, resources. Yeah, needs, wants, and resources, okay. like, you know, trips, like anything As if that the you only want. Way yeah. The only way it. you can get any of this stuff is with cash. Right, right, right. And for most of us, the only way you can get cash is trading your time, yeah. your resources, your energy yeah. for money from someone else yeah. who's determining your value yeah. usually, um, what you're going to do, Working how you're going to spend your time. Mm-hmm. So trading time for money then is compounded in its expense because say I want to Say I want a massage and it costs me a hundred dollars cash, mm-hmm. then I have to work the number of hours it takes to earn a hundred dollars yeah. cash and then give it to the massage therapist. Yeah. But if the massage therapist and I have some sort of other like reciprocal agreement where they say I will lovingly and willingly and joyfully give you a massage um, because you're doing this amazing thing that's that's similarly valuable, mm-hmm. and so now we've cut cash out of the middle. And so now Mm. I no longer have to go out and earn cash in order to trade it for a service or an item or whatever. So I've saved, I've recaptured my time, my essence. How is this different from like a bartering system? It's not. It's not, is it? It's not. It's just, except for the problem that I have with the word bartering is there's a, there's an, there's really more of a um, connotation of pay as little as possible. Yeah. Give as little as possible. Yeah. And that is not, that is not the okay. place to come from. That's um, an important distinction. It's very important. So thank you for bringing important. it up. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. For I, me, that just landed like, okay, this is not that. We're not mm-hmm. playing a zero sum game. It's how can I give something that's of the full or even more value mm-hmm. Generosity. thing that I want? Yeah. Exactly. We've got to be generous for mm-hmm. that to occur. So, okay. so basically in the same way that I said, there is two too strong of a connection between currency, cash, and needs, wants, desires, and the only way to get these is through cash. So that that's one really strong connection that is at not true. Another really strong connection is, and the example of a massage therapist is perfect, um, is that the um, reciprocity automatically has to come between us. It's a, that it's it's a you and I are sharing an experience, you know, we're, we're, share, we're spl- mm. going back and forth with something in particular. I'm offering value. You're offering value back to me, but we're the only two involved. And it sounds to me like this is the concept of divine compensation. Right. Is what yes. we're talking about. Yes. Is that based on what I give and what I'm putting in, I will be receiving an equal or even more abundant measure Mm -hmm. if it's coming from a place with even the smallest flavor of of like i am giving more than i'm receiving i am um i'm starting to feel a you know a shade of resentful Mm -hmm. i am feeling fear because not enough cash resources are coming yeah so those are like the you know the killers of the flow Mm -hmm. of the actual um and I think not only they, – they may not kill the flow as much as I suspect. I think it's more that they kill your ability um, – they strangle your ability to see the ways that the compensation uh, – the divine compensation is actually arriving. Yeah. yeah so yeah. cash specifically. There are needs for actual cash. Yes. that's that In our current paradigm, that's not going to go away. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, and so there's like a bottom-up and a top-down way. But, you know, the, the – first place to start, and I'm sure you've already done this, but the first place to start is looking at, is there absolutely anything I can shave? And it could be something like for me, I stopped working with, you know, one phone company, like one of the big names. And I started working with Mint, for example, and I saved, it used to be a hundred dollars a month and it went down to 30. Mm -hmm. So that $70 difference I've now recaptured by 
not paying that higher amount. And I'm going to move that actual $70 cash saved to one of my other needs. Mm -hmm. So, you know, definitely a penny saved is a penny earned. Like this, that one is to, to an extent true until it comes to the hoarding point. There's, you know, so there's always like, a, just like everything in life, there's a range, Harmony. right? But in the beginning, it's looking for the places, where can I save? Where can I save the actual cash resources that I do have? I haven't used this one subscription in three months and maybe I should pause it oh, yeah. or cancel it. Oh, yeah. You know, so that's for always sure. first step, of course. That's for always sure. first step. And then the next step is how could I get any of these needs met without cash or how could I get some of my other needs met that I currently trade cash for um, yeah. without trading cash. And so you would journal that out or something. Yeah. I mean, it's down. very much about, it's very much about um, tracking um, and there's a variety of ways to track it. Uh, this in my, you know, moon site journal just happens to be one can way. We, can we show this? To yeah. You? Well, there's two pages here. On, I think I don't know if it's going to be flipped. So on this side is um, th where you calculate your sacred income by actual numbers, current monthly living and operating costs at a survival baseline. Yeah. And then on this side, it's the same. It's asking for the same information, but then it's like, what are your actual monthly living and operating costs if you're thriving? You're getting clear on what your needs yeah. are. And right. then the fact that some of them can be met by cash, but some mm -hmm. of them could come in other ways. Right. Too. It's disconnecting that idea of the only way I can get the things I need and want and live in that like lifestyle I want is by earning the cash. This is something I've been practicing. So I want to give like a tangible example mm -hmm. too. I've been practicing when it comes to clothing mm -hmm. for several years. I would say like 90, maybe 95% of my clothing has come from clothing swaps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. Right Such there that with you. literally yeah. I'm like recycling clothing swap clothing. Yes. It's like yes. the a next clothing swap, mm -hmm. like go to a clothing swap, like have a stuff for a, a season, a year, mm -hmm. a couple of years, whatever, depending on the quality of it. Mm -hmm. And then like next clothing swap comes around and I'm literally like taking mm -hmm. clothes I got at a previous clothing swap to that clothing swap. Some of them, right? Some right. of them I keep like... But that is I and and then my wardrobe is consistently shifting and, and I'm not spending money right. on so it. So that's an excellent example of something to track. So you would yeah. have if you had the cash resources, you would trade them for clothes. I would be. But since you did not need to trade those yeah. cash resources for clothes, you still got to feel put together and yeah. you know, fashionable and you know, um having some change available without Absolutely. a big resource Variety. so what i used to do with my swaps i haven't been recently necessarily but i literally would come home from a swap and i would go through everything i just got and i would be like if i were to trade cash for this thing especially new for example how mm -hmm. much would that have cost me mm -hmm. and then i just literally in true currency terms would look at it and go, I just came home with $950. I was going to say a thousand bucks. Yeah. yeah usually okay. it was well over a thousand dollars. Cause yeah. I mean, I got the most beautiful leather boots, for example, mm. I got Italian leather boots. I've one got all time. sorts of designer things. And it, yeah, lots of designer. Spots, yeah. And same with when I go to Goodwill, I, cause I yeah. am trading some money, but I'm like, I got this thing was nine, $95 new and yeah. I paid eight. And it's also so not the to difference say that is, money saved yeah. okay and so you you yeah. count that in sure. your full like net worth because okay. you know so because then it gives you the recognition of okay i got to have the joy and the yeah. you know delight Connection. of having this really valuable thing but i didn't have to trade my time money resources my energy in order to have that thing the difference and between the like retail value of something mm -hmm. and what you actually pay mm -hmm. for it mm -hmm is divine compensation. Yeah. Cause, and the reason why is because see, so, so when I add that into my net worth, for example, that's when I just kind of offhand said, Oh, there was one quarter where I tracked my divine compensation as well as my cash compensation. And, um, I was making $10,000 a month mm -hmm. based on what I, the value of what I was actually receiving. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's how it came about that number mm. is if I were, cause if I really had a fuck ton of money, mm. I would buy really nice things. Not now, but if I had never lived this way, it, you know, if I, 
had never lived this way and just and was willing to trade cash for things, um, I would just like assume, okay, well, if I was a multimillionaire, I might have a house like this. Right. If I was a millionaire, I might rent a house like this. <laughs> I would buy land. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm just do. saying, like, you know, so like this is even an example. The value yeah. of my ability to stay in a home, which I haven't even looked to see what it would cost to rent something like this on Airbnb. I've literally never had cause to look up a house like this Probably on Airbnb. Least, like a couple grand. Probably a day. Yeah. So I consider all of that to be because if I would trade cash for this experience, it would have cost me mm. many thousands of dollars. I've been on, mm. I'm gone on vacation mm. for 16 days mm. and I'm getting paid so, for it. So it, you know, it all kind of comes Dang. together. It's if you're not trading cash, you're still receiving the value. This is such an important concept. Mm -hmm. I, I love talking about this. I'm mm -hmm. curious, like what other we're around the 30 minutes. We're at 30 minutes, yeah. yeah. And I'm curious what other mm -hmm. concepts we want to talk about or mm -hmm. share before. Well, I think to make it really practical, because I know that it's still like kind of um, tough to kind of hang on to for especially folks who really haven't even started to break themselves out of the paradigm of, you know, um, trading time for money and capitalism where you, you trade money for services and goods. Like that's, that's how it happens. Mm. Um, uh, so to make it really concrete, um, uh, it really, I mean, it, nobody likes to cut back, but that really is the first step is to go through and look at everything and, you know, really get firm, like, like, okay, what is the value that I'm receiving from this subscription? For example, even it's only, it doesn't matter. It's only $5. Well, so cutting back. Yes. Yeah. And then also it sounds like having a ledger or keeping yes. some sort of like journal. Do, you got to like get I'm, it out of your I'm head. I'm going to go and get in and get real clear in yeah. the last six months of like, what have I received? Have I been to a clothing mm -hmm. swap? Have mm -hmm. I gone to and, yeah. a house sit? Have I, you know, received what what have I received like um you know has a month of rent been provided has uh you're, what would that cost you get to drive a really great car I do. you know that you're not actually paying what for. would that be cost what would that yeah. cost yeah right but then so then also when it comes to those hard like rent like someone else paid your rent for one month to say you know six hundred dollars whatever um, that six hundred dollars, if it's not a loan, if you don't have to pay it back, right, right, right. That is direct cash compensation, mm. with the exception of you did not have to trade your time for that money. If it was truly a gift, it's not a loan. If it was a gift, if yeah, it was you a gift, looking at basically you what? would have traded six hundred dollars. I'm just making up numbers. You would have traded six hundred dollars for your rent if it was available to you. So I'm looking at what I was gifted essentially in the last like six months, let's say. But it paid for your rent. So that would, so I actually, I categorize it. Like we really probably should look in my actual budget program that I mm. use, which is called You Need a Budget. It is a subscription, but it's been life altering and I've used it for almost a decade now. Why nab? Yeah. And it's because you, um, you have a very clear budget. You are giving every dollar a job. You know, you've got a line item for each of the things. Like, it's the, the budget everybody hates, but it gets really fun. I was going to say, I was going to no, say. No, everybody hates it. Do you know why people hate it? Because you feel like it's a punishment. It does. It feels horrible you need to, to disconnect every the idea dollar. that it's a punishment. Yeah. This is joyful. Everything about money but needs how did to become you do joyful. How, how, did you, how did you create that? Because for me, the joyfulness or the budget? That. I hear you say every dollar has a job and I'm like, ew, gross. Like it makes me want to barf because I'm like that level of detail seems like a massive waste of time. To um, me. No, it, it, there is a learning curve. Definitely. There is a learning curve. There is an investment of time, but one of the most concrete ways that it has saved me time and again, primarily my health, the way it has saved my health over and over again is by being able to go in and give each of my actual cash a job and then being able to also like keep track of the things that I really am truly receiving that are filling needs for me that I am not trading cash for. And then I can look at it and go, okay, I'm living in fear and thinking I need to get my ass out there and I've got to go do some ride share and delivery. Cause I, I am like, I don't, I, I want 500 more dollars in my account. Instead I look at it and go, well, all of my bills this month are paid. All of my 
month, next month, okay. Mm -hmm. I have jobs that are already on my calendar that are going to be income that will be coming in in those in in those in that time, and so instead, I'm actually seeing that. I, the, the internal pressure I'm feeling to go trade my time for money is fabricated. And in mm. this moment, I do not need to go spend my time and energy in that way. Mm. It is better spent giving it to something that is actually nourishing. You're reclaiming your personal sovereignty in this yes. process as well, yes. which is huge. Yes. I'm excited I, to at some point hash out the numbers yeah. and prove divine compensation yeah. in my own experience. So cool. So cool to talk about this. Mm -hmm. Love this. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I look forward to it con continuing our conversation. And really maybe cool. there'll be other friends who are like, I want to talk about that too. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I mean, <laughs> Let us know in the mm -hmm. comments if you got value out of this conversation mm -hmm. and like also what your thoughts are and also like questions mm -hmm. or yeah, being fly on the wall. Like <laughs> what did you notice? Like what was, you know, what was, what was something that really sparked your interest mm -hmm. or that landed for you or that came out there? Like, I'm curious or I want to know more mm -hmm. or, or I didn't understand this concept. Let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. Cause then we, we like, if we also get that feedback from viewers of this video, we mm -hmm. can go further into those concepts and explore it. Right. Cause again. I just get all excited and nerdy and I don't even like, <laughs> I don't remember what I just said, but I know it was important. <laughs> <laughs> it's so great. It's so, it's so important to talk about this stuff because yeah. the whole paradigm is shifting mm -hmm. and you know, each of us, uniquely as contributing mm -hmm. but it's a whole collective thing and I think mm -hmm. the more we have you know unique minds mm -hmm. who are on similar frequency and we mm -hmm. we create these things that's how the whole system that came to be it was mm -hmm. created and the whole structure that is implemented just now agreement. was ju is just an agreement it's just exactly. an agreement so we got to agree on new things <laughs> people kind of believe her rules let's agree and on a couple new things. of resources that I would strongly recommend is Marianne Williamson's book divine compensation um, and I'll be honest, I have not read Charles Eisenstein's Sacred Economics, I know that was, but I, yeah. I've read at least the first section and I just had tingles the entire mm -hmm. time. I'm like, this is it. This is it. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. But I haven't finished it. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in.